Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Eddie Jennings from EJSLLC.com. This video is going to be another in my RHCSA practice session series where I'm not necessarily trying to give authoritative information, though I do intend for the information to be accurate, but rather I'm showing how I would prepare for the exam with whatever uh, objective is in front of me at the time. And for this video, we're going to be looking at the work with package module streams objective within the deploy, configure, and maintain systems. Before we dive in, I want to thank returning subscribers for watching another video, as well as invite everyone, if you enjoy the content of the video, to make sure you click like. Feel free to leave comments as well. And if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, make sure you click that subscribe button and ring the bell when you do so you can be aware of when new content comes available. So let's dive into module streams. So for this session, I'm going to use Red Hat Enterprise Linux rather than CentOS. And the reason being, A, it's a little change of pace, and B, I want to um, use the actual repositories for Red Hat just because the um, modules and such are, are kind of specific for Red Hat Enterprise Linux. You can use them in CentOS, you can use them in Fedora as well, but it's a little bit more relevant to the actual exam. Now, you may already be familiar with the concept of groups with packages, and let me go into um, Terminal here. I'm actually going to sudo into root. Actual rel will sometimes complain um, when you are just using DNF and yum. Even when you're searching, it'll, it'll complain about permissions. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move into root for all of this. Let's look at some groups here. So we'll do DNF group list. And if I were to install one of these groups, it's going to, um, it's going to bring with it packages that are related to whatever the topic is, such as you see that the group that's currently installed is the workstation group. When I made this VM, I, I wanted to, to use the, the workstation spin, for lack of a better phrase, of RHEL. And so therefore, that, that is the group that, that was installed. Now, modules are a little different in the fact that there's some versioning available with modules. And also, from what I have seen, modules are generally application specific. You're not going to have like module server. You'll have, you know, a module for HTTPD, a module for like Postgres, SQL, and, and the like. So it, it's a bit more specific than what you get with groups. So we're going to clear the screen. I'm actually going to expand my window just a bit. It'll make this a little bit easier to read. Clear one more time. And let's do DNF module list. This is going to return a ton of stuff for us. And so we have modules for Redis. We have it for Ruby on Rails. We have three different modules for Python. Um, we have one module with several different streams for Postgres SQL. And we'll get to that in just a moment. We have some for PHP, Perl, on and on and on. The idea of using these, um, these module streams is I think it can give you a little bit more control over exactly what packages that you're you're wanting to pull down. For example, if we were to do, if we wanted to put uh, Postgres SQL on this, well, this is a workstation, but on a server, and we specifically only wanted to use version, you know, 12 of Postgres SQL, by using the modules, you'll be ensured that only version 12 stuff is made available to you. Now, working with module streams is pretty similar to just installing packages, but you need to understand the concept of like enabled modules and default and all that kind of stuff. So what we're going to do, let's clear our screen. We're going to do DNF module info and actually list. Let's see if this will do what I want. Nope, it didn't do what I want. So let me do that module list again grep for Postgres. I want to see how it's listed. Ah, Postgres SQL. Because we should be able to just list the different streams that are available. Let's try this again. Info might be the command that I want. But I think you can do it with list. Let's find out. 
Yes. Okay. So this is what I want. It tells you the name of the module, the particular stream, and, and a couple other little items with it. What I want to turn your attention to down here where it says hint. By default, if we were to install PostgreSQL, it's going to be using the stream for version 10. And then by default, the particular profile, profile would be, for lack of a better phrase, kind of sub modules. And what I mean by that is the, actually we can do this. I just realized that we can, I can show you what we mean by this. Let's do DNF module. I want, let's do info post SQL and we want to do dash dash profile. I'm going to pipe that to less. And what this shows you, there are several modules within, um, or rather there are several streams within version 10 and version 12. But what this is showing you is the packages that are going to be installed for the client profile and then the server profile. And so it kind of makes sense for PostgreSQL. We're going to get PostgreSQL for the client. If we install using the server profile, we'll be getting PostgreSQL server. And to know what's default for that, we see that we have the D beside server. So can we install client? Sure, but if we just, you know, DNF module install PostgreSQL, all we're going to get are the, the defaults. So with modules, you can enable different modules at, or different streams rather, at different times, but you can't have multiple streams enabled. So let's say that rather than um, PostgreSQL 10, we wanted to install always PostgreSQL 9.6. Well, what we would do if we wanted to enable that, we would have DNF module enable PostgreSQL and then colon 9.6. That's telling that what stream that we want it to use. It's going to ask us if we want to enable that module stream. We'll say yes. It's complete. Let me clear my screen. Let's do that module list again. Notice how this is the module that is enabled is 9.6. So as a result, either if we install the module or if we were to just do DNF install Postgres QL, what should come up is version 9.6, and that is true. Notice how we have version 9.6. Now, if we wanted to change which module was enabled, we have to, or let's try to enable version 12 this time. Let's see what happens. Let me clear my screen. DNF module enable. PostgreSQL 12 is going to complain because you're not able to have more than one stream enabled at one time. And what it encourages you to do is to do DNF module reset, which basically um, gets rid of whatever module you have going on. And so that way you can have like a, a clean enabling of the new module. You can just uh, disable it as well, but we're going to follow the advice that DNF is given us, which we technically haven't installed the module. This would probably be a good idea if we had installed the module and wanted to change to a new stream. So we'll do DNF module reset PostgreSQL. And it asks if, we were, if we're sure. Let's go back to the list and notice we're back to how it was. Nothing is enabled. We have all of our, our defaults for profiles and such. So if we were to enable PostgreSQL 12 and then try to install PostgreSQL, notice that version 12.5.1 is what's going to be the version that, that gets installed. Now, if you watched any of the videos where I did work with the with containers and the RHCSA exam, you'll see in those videos where I use the installing of the module container tools for that. And so let's say that I wanted to install PostgreSQL. We're not going to do a full install, so we'll do DNF module install PostgreSQL. Let's see what it tries to install. So it's looking for server and also for, for dependencies, just PostgreSQL. 
that, that it's going to install as well. Let's say that we wanted to use just the client profile rather than the server. So what we can do here is slash whatever the name of the profile is. I know one of those profiles was client. Let's see what comes up for what it installs. This might not be a great example of it. Well, there you go. It, it, it does not install the server. It's just installing the client. If I were to do the same thing for HTTPD, there's, there's a very clear difference. With HTTPD, let me, let's do DNF module list HTTPD. And we'll see that there are three different profiles for HTTPD, common, development, and minimal. Let's see what the minimal would look like. So that would be DNF module install HTTPD slash minimal. We see HTTPD and a few other uh, dependencies, basically the bare minimum that you need to be able to run HTTPD. Then if I were to choose the development profile, devil, you'll see far more things that, that are being installed because this is a particular module profile that if you were doing development for HTTPD, these are going to be tools that you will likely want and need to have for that. You can also see this. I demonstrated it just a minute ago, but I want to do it again for HTTPD. DNF module info HTTPD dash dash profile. And notice what you're seeing here. There, there's more than just one stream of HTTPD 2.4. Within this particular stream, if we choose the common installation, these are the packages that will be installed. Now, of course, it'll have to grab dependencies and such, but that's part of what your package manager is going to handle for you. Notice that the development gives you these tools and then just minimal will be HTTPD itself. So to demonstrate the actual installation, now that we've kind of talked about the, the theory, for lack of a better phrase, of modules and what to do, let's go ahead and um, do the Postgres installation. So we'll do DNF... SND DNF module install Postgres SQL. We'll choose yes. All right, and now it is complete. So system CTL status. And of course the service is loaded, but it's inactive. We're, we, we currently don't have it on. Now I'm just curious, because remember it complained earlier about enabling other modules for it, or rather, it complained about other streams. So I'm just curious to see what happens if we do this. Now this is something I encourage you to do with your own studies as far as experimenting with things, trying to break it, and then if you truly do break something, trying to fix it. I think that's invaluable for you on your exam. So we're not going to follow the actual advice of doing the resetting of the module. Instead, I'm just going to disable Postgres SQL 12 and enable Postgres SQL 10 and just just to see what happens. Might not let us do it, but let's see what happens. All right, so it completely disables, it's not that particular stream, it completely disables that module. So we're going to say yes. And system CTL status Postgres SQL. All right, so that's still there. Now, we're going to enable Postgres SQL 10. Let's see what happens. All right, so far so good. All right, so we have enabled it. Now let's see what happens when we, when we install it. Of course, I would not recommend you do this in a production environment. This is just for this practice session. Again, just to see what happens. All right, it looks like it's going to try to, to install at the same time. Let's say yes. Let's see what happens. Ah, I see what it did. All right, so it looks like it has downgraded the current installation to the 10.15. All right, yeah, I, I, I could see that. I would imagine DNF will probably try to not hose your system by doing that. But let's do this. DNF, let me clear my screen. DNF module reset Postgres SQL. I'm curious to see what will happen with this. Yep, we are going to reset that. Didn't seem like it uninstalled anything, and it didn't. So let's see. So we reverted back to 10. Let's 
enable 12. Oops, got my order mixed up there. DNF module enable Postgres equal 12. And let's see what happens when we install it. And it's going to upgrade it. Now I know that there is a uh, command for modules where you can explicitly tell just that module to upgrade. So let's say that you have a system where you don't want to do, um, you know, DNF upgrade dash Y, but you just want to do a, a particular module. There is a module command for, um, for just module update and then the module name that, that you want. So I hope you found this useful for working with module streams. They're really not that uh, not that complicated. It's very similar to working with your, your groups. But the key to understand is that you can only have one module stream enabled at one time. Now, if you have different module names, such as the um, Python modules, there's a Python 2.7 module and the Python 3.6, you can have those um, coexisting because they're actually different modules. They aren't just streams within like the Python module. As always, thank you for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed the content of the video, including some of the, the little experimenting we did there at the end, because like I say, when you're studying for the exam, you know, now's the time to try to break stuff and see what happens. If you enjoyed all that, make sure you do click like on the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that as well and ring the bell when you do so you can be aware of when new content comes available. Thanks again for taking the time to watch and I will see you the next time.